there are many types of thin layer chromatography techniques. In this video, we are using a self-made glass plate with silica as the stationary face. It should be handled only by its edge to avoid contamination. A simple TLC chamber can be developed using a beaker and a watch glass. Also, we need a filter paper and a solvent as the mobile face. To prepare the TLC chamber, a small amount of the solvent is poured into the beaker. And a piece of filter paper is kept. Then the chamber is closed with a lid or a watch glass and kept to make the wall filter paper wet. It is done to ensure that the wall beaker is saturated with the solvent vapor pressure so that solvent will run uniformly through the TLC plate. The filter paper is used to speed up the saturation by evaporating a lot of solvent quickly. Now the chamber is saturated. A ruler is used to mark the baseline and the solvent front on the TLC plate or else a line can be drawn by using a pencil without damaging the plate. Then a capillary tube is used to apply a spot of analyte at the baseline. It is important to keep a small and concentrated spots and not to damage the stationary face surface. Then the plate is kept inside the chamber. Make sure the solvent is there and the solvent height is lower than the baseline of the TLC plate. Otherwise, the compounds will dissolve in the pool of solvent instead of traveling up the plate. Then the chamber is closed and kept without any disturbance. Keep a close eye on the solvent front which is the wet moving edge of the solvent. It can be observed that the solvent will carry the compounds along the plate in upward direction. The components which have stronger interactions with the solvent will move faster and the components which have stronger interactions with the stationary phase will move slower through the plate. Do not let the solvent get to the upper edge of the plate. If not, evaporation can take place which can cause errors. Therefore, the TLC plate is removed once the solvent front is reached the marked line. Immediately identify and mark the bands that are formed.
The distance travelled by the solvent front and the compound can be measured using a ruler. Then the retention factor can be determined by using the equation shown in the slide.